Um, well, amid our energy sh shortages, it's incredulous that still to this day, nuclear is not locked in, uh, looked at and considered as a viable option. It should be locked in, but uh, we're waiting for our uh, various political parties to come to the table. Now, you will remember that we had on this show Zion Lights a few years ago. She was a hardcore in, uh, environmentalist, Extinction Rebellion co-founder, uh, absolutely passionate about what she believes is the need to get to net zero. But she was smart enough to realise the way to do it was nuclear energy. We've had Zion Lights on before. She's been on Sky here and she was way ahead of the discussion but it seems the Liberal Party is now and the Nationals have finally caught up to. Zion, great to see you again. How are you? Hi, I'm good, thanks. So, Zion, you'll be glad to know that it took, what, two and a half years since you were first on this show for the Liberal Party, the sort of, sort of centre-right side of politics, to finally embrace what you were saying. If we're going to get to net zero, it has to be with nuclear. We have a Labour Party who have just won government, who are firmly opposed to nuclear. We're just going to play you a quick clip of the current climate change minister. Here he is, Chris Bowen. Nuclear is the most expensive form of energy. We have a cost of living crisis, energy prices going through the roof, and what's their big bright idea? They say, let's, let's have the most expensive form of energy we can possibly think of. Let's come up with the most expensive form of energy and let's put that in the system because that's going to make power prices cheaper. They want that debate? They really want to argue that? Bring it on. It's, a, it's a, just a complete joke. Well, Zion, let's bring it on. That's our climate change minister. He's a bit of a goose, but we'll forgive him that. But it's nuclear, <laughs> not nuclear. But anyway... Um, <laughs> Uh, but, uh, Zion, answer his question about nuclear and why it is necessary if you want to get to net zero. The scientific consensus shows that we need nuclear to get to net zero. There's really no debating that. Um, it's not that expensive. If you look at renewables when they need, when it's not sunny or windy, and I understand you do have a lot of sun over there, more than, you know, a lot of Europe has, even then you require a backup and that requires um, baseload capacity from probably coal in Australia, to stay running, even if you're not using it, you have to pay for it to stay running so that it can be a baseload power um, for when it isn't windy and sunny. So actually, if you factor those costs in of the fossil fuel backup, nuclear is cheaper. There's just That's just what the data shows. So he's, he's grossly misinformed on that point. Um, I don't really know what's happening in Australia with this issue. Like You have a lot of uranium you have a lot of potential, you know, you already mine a lot of uranium, you have a lot of potential to build out and have cheap energy. You know, he's called it, Chris Bowen has called it expensive, but, you know, in Europe, France has had the cheapest electricity of all of Europe for decades, and they have the strongest nuclear program here as well. So um, I wouldn't say that it's more expensive to the consumer either. James. So I want to ask you, though, I mean, while our left-wing Labour Party here uh, is very much against nuclear... I've noticed that in other places, the left is starting to come on board with it. Finland's Greens the other day have passed a resolution saying that uh, nuclear energy is, as you just outlined, a sustainable form of power if you want to get to net zero. Is there a movement on the left where they're starting to come to terms with nuclear and recognize, in fact, that if it is an emergency, if it is net zero is your goal, and you want to maintain uh, something approximating uh, a modern economy, you have to go down this road. It is shifting, and it's been a hard-won victory as well. But um, also I'd say, so the Finnish Greens have come on board. They're very pu publicly advocating for nuclear now. But in Britain, you know, our Labour Party is pro-nuclear. They have been for a long time, and it's been in their policies to build nuclear for a long time. Obviously, we have a conserv conservative government. They're also pro. So the only group here that's anti is the Green Party, ironically. Um, so I just saw a poll, actually, um, data from the Institute of Public Affairs in Australia that just came out like last week. And they found that 53% of Australians support building new nuclear power plants. And only 23% of Australians disagreed with that. So actually, it's, it's kind of is a bipartisan issue in a lot of places in the world. But what you find is the political leaders aren't representing people on those views. Um, just explain to us, Zion, because uh, there's confusion because we don't have any nuclear in, uh, industry here, um, the idea of the small modular nuclear reactors. So that's kind of something that's gained traction with our 
uh, conserv more conservative-minded uh, politicians. Explain to us how they work, what the benefits are, uh, and that versus the kind of big Chernobyl-style, Three Mile Island sort of horror shows that people are terrified of. Well, no one builds the um, RMBK reactors that they used at Chernobyl anymore. That you know, it was able to explode. That that can't happen anymore. We, we don't build those. That was a mistake um, that the Soviet Union made. But um, yeah, SMRs look very promising. The idea is it's just a, a kind of mini reactor that you could just have it, you know, in a, a local location, and it could provide your energy needs locally. It's not, um, you know, they, they're in a very preliminary stage of being built. And I would say we should support all kinds of nuclear, advanced nuclear SMRs, anything, God, fusion if we get it, anything that we, you know, we can to, to provide lots of clean, cheap electricity for everybody because that's what we need to thrive. And, you know, any society thrives by the amount of energy they consume. Ultimately, we just want it to be clean and cheap um, and to run smoothly. So we should be investing in SMRs and the, the British government is as well. But we are also building new power plants. So we're building eight. We've committed to building eight new power plants here. And that's what we really need to be doing is just ordinary existing nuclear. You know, you can say Chernobyl was bad, or you can say Three Mile Island. It's absolutely insignificant numbers of the harm that came from those um, disasters compared with the harm from fossil fuels. And that's without talking about climate change and just look at air pollution. Um, and anyone, you know, you live you live somewhere that has a lot of coal mines, you probably are aware of the air pollution in those areas where, the, you know, those coal fire power stations function. Why not build clean energy it will last for a long time. You actually have the resources as well. You have the uranium that everybody's kind of trying eyeing up now. I don't understand. I don't really understand what's happening there. But I would say Chris Bowen saying that you know nuclear is an absolute joke. Saying that bring on the debate. I'd love to debate him. I will see who's the laughing stock after that debate. Ooh, <laughs> oh, that's an like off on. Here, you go, on. Here on Outsiders Against Zion Lights, will you do it? Might get Matt Keane while we're at it as hey. well. Let's, let's have a party. But, um, the, but uh, Zion, you seem to have a lot more of an honest debate in, in Europe in general where people seem to understand that this carbon neutral economy that you're all pushing towards comes with a significant cost. So it's not going to be just all rainbows and, and unicorns. In Australia, we're told that renewables is the cheapest form of energy. Can you give us an idea? You mentioned France has got the cheapest energy because they've got a lot of nuclear capacity. Compare that, can you, for us with Germany, which has gone renewable mad and what's that done to their energy prices? So France built over 50 reactors back in the 70s. It took about 10 to 12 years. Then they had over 70% clean energy mix from nuclear. And they've maintained that until literally now when some of those reactors are kind of aging and they, they're now building more to replace them. And they have had the cheapest, pre what's happened now with Ukraine, because that's complicated everything, they have had the cheapest electricity to the consumer, to the average French citizen in all of Europe. Because those power plants end up paying for themselves, right, after a long time, they function for a long time. You know, you think solar panels, sure, you can have them on your roof, but you still have to replace them every 25 years. These power plants have been running for decades. They can run for over 60 years. And even the aging plants that we have in Britain now are being extended, so they're going to run even past that. Whereas in Germany, they spent billions, billions on building out renewables. And what they ended up doing was signing up to the Nord Stream pipeline, which then fell through because of the what's happened with um, the Ukraine and Russia. And now they've got a deficit of energy. They're importing nuclear from France instead to fill the energy gap, which I just find absolutely ridiculous. And the price to the average consumer there is almost twice, almost twice what it is in France. That's the price because mm -hmm. they put so mm -hmm. much money into these things. Now, I understand it was kind of an experiment and they wanted to see if it worked. I'm not saying that was necessarily wrong, but we do have to look at it now and say that didn't work actually. And their emissions also, they have some of the worst emissions in Europe. So it didn't even work with what their original aim was. Um, we only need to look at France and also, yes, Finland and Sweden, what other countries are doing to say, well, it works for them. Why reinvent the wheel? This is, this is a good product. It works. It's cheap. It's clean. Good jobs for people who want good engineering jobs, um, you know, with good wages. What, what's not to love, I don't really understand. But, you know, this is this is a debate that I've been having a lot with people. And I do find that many people are coming on board. And sometimes it is just that the, the political leaders need to catch up with where people are at. And I'd even say with the Green Party here, 
um, that shift is happening. And there was a poll recently that showed quite a lot of people coming on board. But the party itself is like very strongly anti-nuclear, very, very much lobbying against nuclear. So I'm kind of fighting that at the moment as well. So Zion, we'll, we'll finish up here because I just wanted, but I just wanted to quickly ask you on that point. You very bravely, kind of you, as I've said before, you were part of Extinction Rebellion. You were one of the uh, leaders or, or leading figures there. Uh, you've embraced nuclear. What sort of? I find that uh, as soon as you talk about nuclear amongst younger people, there's a definite interest. There isn't this stigma about nuclear, and they're, they're kind of okay. This is a magic wand. This this solves all our problems at once. Since you've been involved in pushing for nuclear. Have you seen a shift amongst your former friends and uh, colleagues and that in Extinction Rebellion? How's, how's the shift going or are you still very much a lone voice? Where does it sit at the moment? The shift has been amazing. It's been really noticeable. And I actually just tweeted this the other day, a few days ago, where I said, do you know what? It's been months since anyone called me a shill. When I started <laughs> out, everyone just said, she's just being paid to say it, she's a shill. And that no one says it anymore because so many people have come round to it. And... Um, our government's investing in it and yes there are some there's actually ironically the the protests that are happening against that are by someone a, a rich actor here called Bill Nye who has a second home in Suffolk where they're building Sizewell <laughs> new reactor and he's leading the charge he's all over the press trying to stop this being built because he doesn't want the noise when he's sometimes in his house but it's quite <laughs> easy to call out and people are starting to see that for what it is and the, the communities there want the job I've been there and I've met them they want the jobs and they also want engineering jobs and apprenticeships for their children so their children don't then move away to a big city so there's quite a lot of conversation happening now that's shifting people both on the left and the right over here um and there was just a yougov poll very recently maybe last week um that showed that that shift is happening yes especially among young people and also surprisingly among over 65s in the uk actually one of the groups that we need to reach is um it was women funnily enough over here that's uh, one of the demographics that's still very afraid of nuclear, so that's my kind of ne next task now is work out how to reach them. Well, I'm sure you will, Zion Lights, because no one does it like you do. Plus, you've got the best name in, uh, you know, anyway. So <laughs> jealous, so jealous. And as Rita said, you know, more and more people should see the lights. That was her part of the stolen. Um, we've shown you, we always, you're always welcome here on Outsiders, Zion. Great to see you and keep up the great work. Thanks for coming.